Hey guys, thanks for joining me again. Today we're gonna to look at one editing technique that's gonna completely change the way you edit your Milky Way images. Let's get stuck in. If you're new to the channel guys, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. So like I said, we're gonna talk about an editing technique that not many people tell you about, and it's a technique that will completely change the way you edit your images. And what I'm talking about is having the ability to edit the stars completely separate from the Milky Way itself. Now this is a technique that's borrowed from deep sky astrophotography. And up until recently, there hasn't been software that's been good enough to really give us that same freedom when it comes to wide field Milky Way images. Most of the software has really been dedicated to deep space stuff and star reduction and having the ability to edit your images separately has been a bit difficult, but that's all changed. So the software I'm talking about today is Star Exterminator. There has been other star mask software out on the market in the past and they just haven't done the best job when it comes to wide field Milky Way stuff. Now, I've recently tried this program and it's an absolute game changer. It, it will completely change the way you edit images. Let's jump on the computer and check it out. So I've jumped over here into Photoshop and for you guys that follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this image recently. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, jump over and give us a follow. Um, I'll link the two, two platforms a bit and you can sort of see what's going on ahead of time. This is just a raw stitched panorama that I shot on a recent trip to Victoria. And this was shot at 50 mil and these were three and a half minute exposures. Now I'm not sure how many exposures were stitched here together, but this is just a raw stitch file that's been cropped to make it a little bit easier for this particular video. The Star Exterminator program is a plugin for Photoshop and that makes it really, really easy for us. So we don't need, you know, a PixInsight or Deep Space style program to run this star mask. So, you know, most people have Photoshop, so it's pretty cool. So what we're gonna do is jump up here to filter, RC Astro, and then Star Exterminator. And we're just gonna hit OK and let it run. I've already let, let that run, and it does take a couple of minutes for it to do its thing. Now, this is what you get. It's absolutely incredible. Now, like I said, I've used other sort of um, star mask programs in the past, and you get really weird artifacts, but we can see by this, it's really clean. It does a really, really good job of removing the stars and being able to see what's in the actual image. Now, if I just turn this off and go back to the original image, it's really busy and all this beautiful air glow and all this beautiful dust just sort of gets lost in the stars. Now, as soon as we remove the stars, you can just see how much of that beautiful air glows in there, beautiful nebulosity, dust, dust for days. It's just, it's just awesome. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate this layer. So we've got two starless versions. And what I'm also going to do is just duplicate the original, the original star version as well. Now I'm going to come back up here and I'm going to turn off the first starless version. And I'll go to this second one. Now what I'm going to do is change this opacity from normal and I'm going to go to subtract. Now it's obviously just subtracting the starless version from the star version, and what that gives us is a perfect star mask. Now if we zoom in, we can see it's an absolutely perfect star mask. It's just awesome. You know, it keeps all the colors there. It's incredible. So from here, what we're gonna do is merge this layer down so it merges down onto the star layer. Now what we've got is a perfect star mask. So we've got our starless version here and we've got our stars here. Now from this point, what I would do would be just edit the image now without the stars. So if you're editing an image with stars in it, as you start to push and pull that data, your stars get bloated, you blow out all the highlights and things just start to look a little bit weird. So having removed the stars now, we have the ability to edit the Milky Way with no stars in it. We can edit all the background sky with no stars in it. And then later on, we'll just put the stars back and they'll be super crisp and super small. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just do a quick little, I'll do a quick little edit on this. 
nothing too crazy. We'll just do a little bit of a levels adjustment there. And I might do just a little bit of a color correction. You know, this is all just pretty quick sort of stuff. For the purposes of this video, it's a little bit red. Now this was shot with an Astro modified camera, so it is gonna be pretty red. But that's pretty close. That's pretty close to a good color balance for me. So what I'm gonna do now is put the stars back in. First things first, We'll drag this up and we'll put the star layer on top of the starless layer. But before that, I'm gonna duplicate that layer. So now we've got two copies of our star mask. And from here, I'm just gonna turn this first one off and I'm gonna work on this bottom layer. So we're just gonna change the blend mode from normal and we're just gonna put it into screen. Now, what you can see is it's just put all the stars back the way they were. And, you know, if you just wanted to have all the stars back exactly the same as what they were before, but have the ability to edit them separately, you can just do it that way. But for me, the stars look a little bit busy here. So instead of doing a star reduction in Photoshop, which, which does give you weird artifacts and weird things going on, what I'm gonna do is just change the opacity of this layer. And I'm just gonna pull the opacity down. Now what you can see it's done there, if we zoom in, it's put the stars back, but it's put them back a lot, a lot dimmer than what they were. So you can see a lot more of that nebulosity, a lot more of that air glow. And then from here, we're gonna turn on the next layer. Same again, change it to screen. But this time, what we're gonna do is put a mask on this layer. Now, the reason I've duplicated this layer and I'm gonna leave the opacity at 100% is because I want the brighter stars to come back, you know, really, really bright. So I've added a layer mask and I'm just gonna invert that layer mask to completely hide that, that layer. Now, what we can do is we can come in here with a brush a white brush, and I'll increase the flow a little bit. We'll go to 100%. And I'm just gonna brush back in all the brighter stars. Now you can do this till your heart's content. You can choose, you know, if you've got some cool constellations in your images and you want those to stand out a bit more than the other background stars, you can paint all these stars back in at 100% opacity. So we've got a lot of cool stars, a lot of big stars. So we'll just paint these back in. And I guess we shouldn't forget about the Magellanic Cloud, paint him back in so it stands out a bit more. Now you can see this hard edge that I've got. All I'm gonna do now is just reduce the opacity And I'll just switch to a black brush and I'll just feather that edge a little bit. When you do a star reduction this way, you sort of lose a bit of sharpness in the middle of the Milky Way. So what I'm gonna do is just paint back stars just in the center of the Milky Way and leave all this area around with the stars a lot, a lot smaller. So I'm still painting on this original mask and I'm just gonna paint at a flow of about 9%, that's pretty, that should be pretty cool. And I'm just gonna paint these back in with a white brush. Just really subtly paint these, this section back in. And 
And what you can see it's done there is reduce the stars everywhere else and it's put the stars back in in the middle. Now, this is obviously just a rough go to, to give you guys the concept of it. If you think that's too harsh, we can just reduce the opacity of this layer. Just a little bit. And you can just go back and forth and edit this as much as you want and bring out the stars you want, hide the stars you don't want. And it gives us so much freedom, you know, to get the look we're after. So everyone's gonna have a different idea of what they think looks good, but um, this is just, you know, it's just an absolute game changer for me. I would have edited the background sky a lot more. This is just a quick throw together to show you what's possible. And, you know, within a couple of layers and five minutes, I've got an image that looks really, really cool. It's really, really sharp. You can now see, just from a raw file, how much of this nebulosity and dust you can see, and I haven't edited that at all. And all this cool air glow now that you can see poking through that you wouldn't be able to see before. It's just awesome. So I hope that's helped you guys out a little bit. If you do end up buying this program, it is a purchase program. It's about 60 US dollars, I think, at the time of this video. But in my opinion, absolutely well worth it. If you do end up using it and go and re-edit some images and you put them on Instagram, tag me on Instagram. I'd be really interested to see the before and after and how you've utilized this program and this video to help you change the way you edit. That's it. Hope it's helped you guys out. Until next time, cheers guys.